Hey everybody, Dustin Dipirak here. Call this Jeremy Price. Right back on. here, <laughs> back here at Assembly Hall. Uh, Indiana wins pretty comfortably, uh, 87 to 61 over North Dakota State in uh, the first game of, of the Legends Classic. Even though you know this doesn't work like a tournament at all, they get to go to Brooklyn regardless of what happens today and on Thursday. But these games theoretically count uh, for that, and and really it's. That's more for the teams that don't go to Brooklyn. They all kind of get together next week in like Pittsburgh and a whole bunch of other places to play some games. Um, but anyway, uh, this I think this game it's going to be forgotten quickly. I don't think it's a game that many people are going to remember much past this evening or much past this week. But I do think it's actually one that's really telling for Indiana in a lot of ways in terms of the style that they had to play and what they were able to do uh, against it and how they were able to sort of impose will against a team that very much wanted to do the opposite of what it wanted to do. Uh, North Dakota State plays has some similarities with, to Wisconsin. It's not the same. It's not the same swing offense or whatever, but they like to grind a little bit. They like to slow it down. And, uh, you know, Indiana played that game with them a little bit, but also kind of refused to play it in certain ways. And I thought the way that they were able to dictate, uh, you know, showed some things, some signs that they can take with them for future games against teams that don't want to play fast. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I think this was a real interesting game from the standpoint of, honestly, I expected a little bit more out of North Dakota State. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a team with a history of having pulled off some upsets right. in the past, uh, or at least hanging around in, in mm -hmm. some games. So... The fact that Indiana was able to put them away the way they did, I thought, was impressive. And you're right, the, the style of play uh, was certainly something different. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. Bryant was willing to kind of run and gun and right. have fun and all that stuff. but Because uh, Bryant was just kind of here. I yeah. mean, they were just like, I mean, yeah, I give credit to Bryant. That's not gonna, that's, that, that team's going to be a lot better than it was a year ago, Bryant will. They're, they've got a couple nice players, but I mean, I think they still realized that they were outmatched. North Dakota State, uh, I, I don't think that they were... They didn't come in here blew, blown away, you know, in the same way. I mean, I think North Dakota State is a better team. That team's going to have a real shot in the Summit League. Uh, I think South Dakota State probably still gets it just because they've got the Wolders kid who's like preseason All-American, according yeah. to some people. Uh, but this team is going to hang around a little bit with, with some teams. It was just Indiana just has that much power still. I think at the end of the day, they just have that much firepower that they can against a team at that level. Even when somebody wants to slow it down, that, that's at that level, Indiana can refuse to do it. And I thought that was the, the difference in the game was even though North Dakota State was doing what they wanted to try to do offensively mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, slowing it down, working the ball around, but it just seemed like they had to work so hard in order to sure. score points while mm -hmm. Indiana, it just came so much easier. I mean, there, there were times that they struggled for little stretches, but the ability to put together sustained runs for Indiana was really the difference in the game. They were able to put yeah. those spurts on the and... That was largely because of the bench. Tonight. Right. The number that stands out to you for me when I look at the stat sheet is uh, IU outscored. IU had 25 points off turnovers to North Dakota State six, and that goes back to a lot of things Tom Crean has been saying all summer about how important defense is going to be for this team, about how uh, you know that's going to allow them to run. And the, the only way they're really going to be able to run is that they play better defensively and cause a lot of turnovers. Well, that's what you saw tonight. They had they caused 16 turnovers against this team, and four you know in a game that had fewer possessions than you're going to see. Well, you know wasn't incredibly grinding slow. It wasn't Wisconsin level slow, uh, but they, you know, again, 25 points off turnovers, buried down there. Uh, that I mean, that that is pretty much exactly what they want to do. I mean, that's how they got to move. That's they got scored 16 points off the break, and that's also how they were sort of able to, you know, impose will and also create kind of a sense of awe as well as they got moving. You know, that's the occasion when you know North Dakota State sees Cody Zeller get going on the break. Uh, they they made really a point to try to beat him up all night. In some cases, they were successful, but. You know, Zeller runs so well on the break, and guys were able to find him, you know, just going to the basket. Uh, and, and that's where he really kind of got people going. He still finished with 22 points tonight on a night where he was apparently sick. Apparently he was real sick. I don't know how, how much, but I mean, he was at least there enough to kind of stand up and play, and he didn't look bad when we saw him post-game. But Crean said that, you know, he was significant enough to tell somebody, which is not apparently something that Cody usually does. Um, but that's kind of, you know, that, that, you know, that allowed Indiana to be Indiana. They were, you know, because they had turnovers, they were able to get, able to get on the break. Victor Oladipo, uh, he hasn't had a great offensive night yet, but um, had four steals, basically was just harassing people, just getting all over them and just, you know, tipping the ball away from them and stuff like that. He was pretty critical in that. Uh, and they were able to just get going. I mean, they, they had they finished with eight steals, caused more turnovers than that. Uh, and, you know, again, Managed to do what they want to do for the season. That their their goal for the season really is to be able to uh, play their game because of what they do on the defensive end. 
Yeah, and you've got the 16 fast break points, 32 points in the paint, and that doesn't even take into account the free throws, Mm -hmm. which Indiana was 22 of 30. Yeah. Yeah, no, they they went to the bucket, they got fouled, you know, they, they... there were occasions when they, they were really cold from the field, but it didn't matter because they just kept drawing fouls. They kept getting inside and making them. And so they weren't perfect. Cody was six for ten. You know, Cody's beating himself up a little bit. I think he, he, <laughs> he knows he wants to he, he wants to miss a few uh, you know a few fewer uh, fewer of those. I guess is the point. Um, but uh, another big story of the night, obviously, I think was was the bench. Remy Abel uh, st- steps up and scores 14 points tonight. He's, he was a perfect five for five, hit three three pointers. Uh, and, uh, he hasn't missed a shot yet. He was two for two against Bryant. He's been over double, double, double digits in both of these games. And, uh, Remy really, and, and I, ma- I made a point to talk about it in my game story today. Remy is the guy that, you know, he, he's in some ways one of the least touted guys on this entire team, but he refuses not to be counted on this team as, as much talent as there is, as much other guys that want his spot as there are. Uh, Remy's going to make a point to matter to this team, and he has done a lot to make sure that he still is, is of value. Uh, he's become a much better shooter, and he wasn't a bad shooter last year. He was 6 for 15 for 3, but he's much more confident, and you can tell. I mean, he just was letting them go and just knocking them down the night. Uh, that seems to change a lot, you know, add a lot for me. If, if, he, if, if he comes in and he can play the point in relief of, of Farrell and Hulls and as, as well, and also can play point along with them and even allow both of those guys to play off the ball for a couple stretches and also can shoot threes and defend as well as he can and get to the rim as well as he can, that's a guy that's going to matter all year long. Yeah, he's a guy that can do a lot of things, and the best thing for Indiana is that his attitude is I'll do whatever mm. I'm needed to do. Yeah. Some games that might be score two points, but play some mm. good defense. Other games it might yeah. be like tonight where he comes out and hits every shot he takes, he scores 14 points, mm. does whatever. Steals, rebounds. Uh, he's kind of one of those guys that can fill up yeah. all, the, all the categories on a stat sheet. Mm. And it's kind of one of those cases, I, I think, too, where the experience he got last year mm. is just invaluable for him Yeah, to have gotten his feet wet in that situation. And that's something mm. that nobody expected going into last year. Well, yeah, he just got forced into it because of Verdell's two injuries. You know, each of them, those were, he stepped up in critical times, you know, both in February when he, you know, hit the three to beat Purdue and then in the tournament when they really needed somebody to take some pressure off of, uh, of Jordy, especially in that VCU game. You know, Remy was critical in that area, just being able to take the ball at all uh, and just give any any bit of relief that, you know, because Hulls needed it really bad at that point. But, yeah, no, I mean, that made a huge difference. He's a lot, you could tell he's a lot more confident. You tell you could tell he really put a lot into the summer. I mean, he, uh, Coach Green made a point to say, Coach Don Green made a point to say that uh, Abel had gone back, you know, really when he came back from Louisville, he said he, he didn't stick around for uh, the first semester, the first uh, the first session of, you know, summer school this year. Instead went back to Louisville, uh, worked out with one of his former, not, not the head coach at Eastern, but one of, I guess, the assistants, and uh, just shot just stayed in the gym and basically just came back a totally different guy when he got back in june for the second summer session and really you know cody zeller said you know what he was hitting that shot all summer too you know that that's been there and uh you could tell a big difference of him just in his confidence i mean i think even you know last year it seemed like he didn't entirely know what was going on you know play by play you know there were sometimes he wasn't entirely sure of you know the way certain plays the way offense was, was to run in certain cases he gets it now all over the place i mean he he just he, he just gets it. Offense, defense, everything. He just, yeah, he, he, you're right. I mean, there's just a different... Sometimes mm. it's even hard to put a finger on it. I mean, yeah. he's got confidence. Uh, mm. Just his, just the way he moves on the court is yeah. completely different. Last yeah. year at times, you could tell he was a little bit There lost, was a little, a little bit of fogginess, but yeah, yeah no, there now there's none of that. Um, you also saw another a, a big night from Jeremy Hollowell in, in a bunch of ways. And what, uh, what I think was most critical about what you saw from Hollowell tonight, they played a lot of that small lineup. Uh, that, that they're going to have to play a little bit because with, with Perea and Jerkin out and, and Derek Elston also out, uh, they were able to play a lineup that really had, you know, in some cases it was Watford and Hollowell, but in some cases it was Hollowell was very much the five. Yeah. Uh, you know, it was like him and Sheehy and Creek and Abel and Yogi or something like that. I mean, there was a lot of just uh, all over the place, really small lineups, and that's not something you're going to be able to do against the UCLA's and North Carolinas of the world, uh, but they're going to have to do it against some of these other non-conference teams, and maybe there will be occasions where they have to play that lineup against those you know, top-level teams, and at least they showed ways it could work. They, they showed the, they showed things that they could do. Again, you know, create some havoc, cause some turnovers, get moving, just run, uh, and find a way to just you know, take their weakness and make it a strength. Yeah, it very much could happen, and the best thing for Hollowell is that he showed a willingness to get mm. physical in the post, especially yeah, yeah. on the defensive end. I liked mm. how he, was, he wasn't he was allowing some big bodies from North Dakota to just push him around. He was pushing mm. guys off the block 
defensively and, and get really getting up into them. And, and that, mm. that bodes well for his future and his ability to contribute, whether it's at the four, or the five, the three, whatever. Yeah, no, definitely. And and I think uh, if, if, you know, if you've been following Hollowell and if you're, if you're an IU fan, obviously, and you, you kind of know sort of Hollowell's story and just kind of the, I guess, I guess you could say knocks against him from the past. I think if you heard, you know, the way Tom Crean talked about him tonight, uh, you had to feel, you know, pretty positive about this. I think, was, you know, Hollowell kind of had the same knock that you've heard things about Christian Watford. It's like in some cases, the passion isn't always there. He's not always fired up. And uh, but you you heard I think something different from from Crean tonight about that. That you know he said for one he said he's he's getting the offense, he's getting the systems on a level almost on par with Yogi, and that's really impressive. I think everybody always knew that Yogi is one of those basketball geniuses, and nobody necessarily thought of Hollowell in the same fashion. So to hear that him in that same sentence, you got to think, wow, that, that that shows a lot in terms of the way he's really attacking this and getting after it. And also he just talked a lot about the effort that he's seen from Hollowell. And uh, you, you, you've seen, I think, the first two games kind of Hollowell at his best, Hollowell at his most engaged and fired up and, and, and getting after him. He's still not a guy that's going to look like uh he's excited you're not going to see a lot of facial expression from him but he was always in it you know and uh you've seen that a lot from him really it seems like he's very much taken all this to heart and really figured out ways that he can attack and get after it and be aggressive uh as a player um so that obviously is something that bodes well for for IU going forward if he's going to be that type of guy you know especially early when they need him and even later when they need don't need as much of him it's still going to matter a lot yeah it seems like he's pretty much put himself in a position where he's going to have a role Mm -hmm. No matter yeah, what, he's going to be there. He's the going to be a part and, of this. You know, yeah. a lot of people thought it might be a year or so down the road before he really worked himself bit, into that yeah. position, or mm-hmm. at least take most of the season to get into that position. Yeah, he's and there. He seems like he's there already. Yeah, so they've they've figured out a lot already. But anyway, thanks, guys.